The following program is rated TV MALSV. It contains strong language, sexual situations, and violence. It is intended only for mature audiences. Okay, little bro, you ready for this? This ain't a game, Neat. You ain't playing GTA no more. This grown man business right here. I need to make sure you ready for what's out there. Come on, man. You know I'm ready for this shit, bro. I need this. I'm tired of being fucked up. I'm trying to get like you. Yeah, I hear you. Just make sure you stand on business. At the end of the day, you not me, little brother. And that shit hold a lot of weight. You know what I'm saying? I got you, man. I'ma definitely stand on that business. Just how you and Pops told me. Come on, now. You know I can't make the family name look bad. Not at all. All right, so this is what I need you to do. Old man Seldon opened up a bike shop a couple weeks ago. And he refused to pay us for our protection. So we gonna show him just how valuable our protection is. Now I want you to get in and out. Nobody needs to get hurt. You hear me, Neat? No bodies. Not on this one. I'ma send Nitty and D-Man to go along with you. Just make sure you bring me all the money in the morning. Say less. I'll see you in the morning. Before going meet up with Nitty and D-Man, I had to go find me a weapon. One thing about my brother, he always got a gun stashed away in the hood. Now I'ma take this Smith & Wesson, I'ma go do this lick, and afterwards, I'ma keep this one for me. Shit, I need some protection out here anyway. Shit been getting crazy. After I picked up the Smitty, you know I had to tuck that the dummy way. Then I was walking through this alley thinking, man, I need some wheels. I can't be out here trying to rob niggas and walking and shit. That's when I came up. I seen this old ass beat up ass dirt bike sitting in the alleyway on some fucking bricks and wood. I said shit, don't mind if I do. I've been hot wiring dirt bikes since I was a kid, so this shit shouldn't be nothing. Come on, man. Come on. I got a family. Why y'all gonna do this to me, man? Hardworking, man. Pay taxes. This ain't fair. Ain't nobody trying to hit that shit, old head. Now, where the fuck is the money at? I'm just saying, man. Y'all ain't gotta do this. Look, if y'all want a job, bro, shit, you know what I mean? Probably could get y'all in here, you know, six fifty an hour. It's something. Come on, man. See out here in West Baltimore, it's eight to get eight. Either you gonna take, or you gonna get taken from. You choose what side you on. The shorties of Baltimore ain't playing fair no more. Now it's time for the old heads to give back. Come on, Sal. You knew what it was. Soon as you open up this joint, and you ain't cut us the fuck in. Nigga, it's called extortion. And you already know how my crew give it up. One false move, your brain's all over the floor, dummy. Better think about that shit. Come on, man. It didn't have to be like this, Nick. I watched you grow up, man. I watched you grow up, and I used to know your pops. And you, Nitty, I can't believe you got a gun in my head, Nitty. No D, man, bro, at least leave the work. I gotta pay my plug back. I'ma need something to re-up, man. Yeah, hello. 911. I would like to report a very heinous crime. Tonight, I was robbed at gunpoint. My name is Sal. I have a business in West Baltimore. And these little niggas, I mean, these young guys, they ran in there and they just started taking my shit, man. What are their names? Um, well, one of them, their name is. Neek, what the fuck happened out there, bro? I told you no bodies, man. What the fuck? What you mean, bro? We ain't hurt nobody. 
we got the money, then we got out of there. Yeah, well, somebody did something. Casal is dead, bro. Dead. Gone. Finito. Like, not coming back type shit. I don't need this shit to fall back on none of us. Especially not you, Neek. Yeah, it's gotta get low. Cause shit about to get hot. What you mean, get low? I don't got nowhere else to go. All I know is West Baltimore. I can't just up and leave this shit like that, bro. On top of that, where the fuck I'ma go anyway? You going to LA to stay with our cousin Youngin for a few weeks. Oh yeah, and Dre gonna go out there with you. Auntie told me he been getting in trouble on the east side. So fuck it, y'all ass can ride together. After I shook back from that yerky, all I could do was sit on the floor and think about my life. And you know I had to roll up some of that Zod I got from Youngin earlier. Now this shit right here, it's that real gas. Unlike that bullshit Dre was smoking. I guess I could get used to LA. Shit, things is a whole lot different from back home. But hey man, I'm here now, so I gotta make the most of it. I at least owe that to Namir. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm about to get some chips out this motherfucker. And they call and they call New York the city that never sleeps. Yo, who the fuck is this nigga? Who the fuck this nigga is? But he better not try shit. Might not got the yamis on me. Shit, get active. I don't know who the fuck that is. Who that nigga looking at? Why he? Yeah, I don't know who he is. Looking at me. That's why I'm keeping walking. That's why you gotta keep the hoodie on, nigga. Come on, man, get in this bitch. Yo, Eddie, where the fuck Eddie me, at? Grab me one of these crispy creams. I gotta see where my son Eddie at, man. No, son, you gotta come back here, bro. Look at this nigga, bro. There's no fucking what way, the bro. What fuck? This nigga meditating? Bro, Eddie, them LA niggas be weird, up, son. Yo, E, get the Eddie. fuck up, nigga. Fuck I don't that nigga. I wanna be in here. This shit possessed. Yo, fuck that nigga. I'm about to steal out this bitch. Yeah, I'm about to grab me a bag of barbecue chips. Hey, nigga need these, bed. bro. The Frosted Flakes, need, need them bitches. Donut. Matter of fact, let me get a backwood while I'm in here. What you talking about? Facts, bro. You got to get all the wood, son. Word. What a lean at. What a lean at. We need that. Oh, I see a cigarette pack. So what the fuck? Oh, no, I see Yo, that. do this fucking ATM work? Man, we got to get out of here, bro. We been in this shit too long. Word, bro. All right, go home. Just roll me up another one. I feel that. Oh, shit. What the fuck? Damn dummy. Man, look He's at him. Dummy. That's what he get for mugging a nigga. Bad, bitch ass, ass nigga. I ain't Dirty gonna lie, bro. Ass, ass no bap say, bro. When they pull off with that boy, you trying to hop in that boy shit? See what he got in that motherfucker? Fucking right. Shit, that's if they don't take that bitch. They not gonna take that shit. It's only two of them. I ain't like, they probably ain't gonna take that shit. That boy should look dirty anyway. They yeah, fucking yeah. over that nigga. God damn. When I got back in the crib, you know I had to go holler at my big bro, not me. Shit, it's almost been a full day since I've been gone. Of course, he giving me the usual run around. Niggas dying, niggas getting locked up. You know, everyday shit. He told me to be safe, and he told me not to worry about West Baltimore for a couple weeks. Shit getting hot in the streets. So I guess I gotta chill out here with Dre and Youngin. Damn, dummy, I'm a missing nigga, yo. I wonder what he doing on LA. He better be getting some fuck money or something. 
He lucky though. I wish I could get away from this shit. Shit, leave Bimo? Nah, y'all can never. I love this shit, dummy. Ain't no place like home. See, you still young, shorty. You don't understand. I told you I had that same mindset. Only because I ain't seen the world yet. I'm trying to see the world. I'm fuck Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, D-Man. I might be 12, but I'm outside. I'm a grown-ass man. And you know this shit, bro. After we got home, I ended up counting up all my money. I done finally made $800 while being in LA. I ain't never seen this much money in my life. Now, Amir definitely ain't never gave me this much, even when I used to do his chores back when we was kids. The crazy part about it is, I came out here to stay out of trouble. But ever since me and Dre touched down, that's all we have been getting into. I ain't gonna lie, today Dre really showed me that he not a bitch ass nigga after all. So maybe in the future, me and him could get to a lot of money together. Matter of fact, me, him, and Youngin. Look, Zoe, I know you just got out about an hour ago, but she hate it right now. We gotta get you a gun or something. Man, this West B more dummy. Shit always been hectic. But I could definitely use a strap, though. I can't get caught out here bad. Big Zoe back, man. It's time to get active. Man, that's what the fuck I'm talking about, Zoe. We need you out here, especially right now. We just lost little Ricky, and we still hurting behind that. Damn, not little Richie, yo. Yeah, man. We tried to get back, but I don't know if I hit shit. I lit that whole V up, though. At least one of the niggas had to catch a leg shot or something. Man, fuck that. I'm back in this shit. And I'm going to make sure the whole West Baltimore fell out of pain. Lil' Richie was my little man. I ain't letting this one go. Shorty hop up out that van dummy, Shorty. get the dumping, D-Man double back like he forgetting something. Yeah. Hop out blinking, Shorty grab the wheel, then he start sending something. Yeah. Walk down on him, stood over top, D trying to finish something. I heard he caught a back shot, that's what he get from running. You gotta stand on business when it's time. 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 Heard that nigga dissing, still broke, shit don't make no sense. He in college, wearing Puma, can't even change his fit. Nigga tried out for the game, but he ain't make the list. He can't even make a bitch date, how he gon' make a dish? After we finished smoking that blunt, a couple hours went by. I found myself laying down, watching TV. Then I seen the craziest shit I thought I could never see. I changed the channel a couple times, and the local news popped up. Then I said, fuck it. I checked out Baltimore. Now, you know I done been on this block a couple times, and it definitely looked like I know who that is running. But see, this part fucked me up, because I know that little bitty ass run anywhere. Nigga, that had to be Shorty. Now, it's crazy, because Shorty a wild motherfucker. Now, if he just did some crazy shit on the news, that's different. I can see why bro don't want me in Baltimore right now. Shit, I got bored in the crib and started going through boy phone that we got from the store. Went through his contacts, text messages, and I found this nigga plug. So of course I had to hit him up and set up a meeting. Now he still think I'm old boy, so I'ma hit this nigga with the craziest surprise attack. 
and see what I could get off of him. Hey, Charles, it's that fucking time, man. You about to run down on this nigga and see what the fuck he talking about. This fucking hood, man, confusing, bro. What the fuck is this? Like a community park or some shit? Gotta go down this way. I see that boy. Hold on. Tell you about to burn this motherfucker though. Motherfuckers just caught a whole homie out this bitch. Once I got back home, I finally bust this shit down. Me and Drake couldn't believe what he was looking at. That nigga had three whole things on him. I don't know what we gonna do with these peas, but we definitely gonna do it quick. Can't be sitting on this shit too long. I was gonna give Dre a pee and give Youngin a pee and keep one for myself, but I don't know if that's gonna work. I ain't seen Youngin in a couple days. He be in and out the crib. Before I wake up, that nigga be gone. So for now, me and Dre gonna have to get to it. Shouldn't be too hard though. Plus I took the phone off the nigga, so whoever call that shit, we just gonna make it happen. Just like that, we went from selling coke to selling weed. I guess it was just my luck. A couple hours of making the biggest move I ever made in LA, the police raided the trap house next door. They smelled weed coming from our side and ran in that bitch too. Now luckily, I was the only one home. So they took me down. And of course, I ain't ratting nobody out. But now we out of three pounds. So in reality, I just shot that nigga for no reason. Damn, I got the worst luck. Man, my first day in the pen, you'd have thought I was playing a game of fight night champion or something. Everybody was scuffling. I only seen a select few of niggas minding their business. I couldn't even eat out this motherfucker, man. That fool looked like garbage. I couldn't understand why everybody was so fucking angry. I mean, half of these niggas was in here for little petty weed charges and traffic violations and shit. Ain't like they put me in here with the killers or nothing. I shouldn't even be in here too long. I gotta make my phone call, letting our men know that they got me booked right now. I gotta get the fuck out of here, man. I don't belong in here with these fucking savages, man. These niggas ain't got no purpose, no life. They ain't even fighting over no money or nothing, man. Niggas just fighting to be fighting. As y'all see, they done cut a nigga dreads off. I ain't gonna lie, that shit got me hurting, man. Then I seen some crazy shit, bro. Nigga back out the shank, get the poking nigga, stabbing niggas and shit. You already know I had to get the fuck up out of there. I don't even play them type of games. So I made my way back to my cell. I said, fuck it, this enough recess for me. I'm about to go lay the fuck back down. I guess that's the life of a gangster. And prison time come with it. But I guess it could be worse. Shit, I could be dead. I guess I should have listened to what all my teachers ever told me. That I was gonna either end up in prison or in the grave. But like I said, I shouldn't be in here too long. Cause you know who the fuck my brother is. And that money definitely took. Especially behind these walls. So shit, we'll see just how long I gotta sit. Hello. You have a collect call from... Yo, not me. It's Neek. To accept charges, please say yes or say no. Yeah, I accept. Connecting call. Yo, Neek. What the fuck going on, man? The fuck you mean you got locked up? The fuck you get locked up for? Yo, first of all, slow the fuck down. Nigga, I sent you that lady to stay the fuck out of trouble. Now, yeah, I know I told you to go take what you want, but I ain't say get caught, nigga. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Money tight right now. Now, I'm gonna get you out of there soon, but it might be a couple days. I'm telling you, you don't want to be back out on these streets, Neek. Man, shit is real right now, all right? I gotta keep my head on the swivel. Shorty out here doing hot shit. I know you seen him on the news. And D-Man tripping out about what happened the other day. Man, we gotta hold shit down. I'ma need you to be strong in there, all right? This right here is the testimony of gangster. So if you can't hold it down in there, you can't hold it down anywhere. Give me a couple days to get this money together, all right? I'ma get you out of there, Neek. Just hold it down. I got you. Shit, I'm coolin', man. I ain't gonna lie. Being in here really got my head on the swivel. Shit, I ain't took a perk in a minute. I'm about to go see if I can get some. Matter of fact, what's going on with that money, man? How long am I gonna have to be in here? 
Now that shit ain't making sense. How the fuck am I your little brother and you top dog on the West, but we ain't even got no bail money? The fuck is y'all niggas doing in the streets? Hey man, I'ma calm down. I can hold my own in here. I'm just saying, niggas in here caged up like an animal. You still in the free world. You don't know how the fuck I feel, man. Look, tomorrow I get a new celly. I'ma see what the fuck he on. Cause if he playing crazy, I might have to stab a motherfucker. Hey right, man, I gotta go, man. I'ma hit you up tomorrow. Hopefully when I talk to you, you have some good news. This weekend, bed for Friday, you ain't try to so I give up your gun Rest up and your little homie, I ain't going out like him Move away to the trick, we stretch it out, we in the gym I ain't read, this my stop right here, man Like I said, I'ma get up with you tomorrow And see what the fuck we gonna get into, man Thanks again for the lick, bro I really needed this shit You don't even know it Yeah, say no more, bro, you already know That shit ain't about nothing, you feel me? I got you, little bro Be careful, I'll keep your head up, please That's a fact, you stay safe, Reed I ain't hitting him in his head And that shit going through his liver And the telly with the hoes, I'm trying to get humpy off the liquor. She keep trying to test my phone, I left that bitch right on the liver. So the guys do greatest this is like we fishing at the river, right? It's for the eyes and niggas clicking up and team. Now, as y'all see, Shorty brought that work back. Now, I meant definitely needed this to grab that money to get Neek out of jail. And of course, he wasn't gonna leave Shorty hanging. He hit that nigga with a couple hundred dollars and gave him a new gun so he could be safe out here. Now, we all know Shorty just did some wild shit and he was on the news. Damn, Shorty, you just came through. I ain't gonna lie, we definitely needed this, bro. I'm about to hit the block, flip this shit, get Neek out of jail. I don't know if he gonna come back to Baltimore or not, but you know I can't leave little bro in there. I just wanna let you know, bro, I'm proud of you, man. You came through for the gang today, and that shit ain't gonna go unnoticed, you hear me? I want you to take that money, go back to the east side, and chill out for a couple days. I'm gonna hit your phone with the next mission that I need you to do. Like I said, bro, be safe out here. The streets ain't forgot about that shit you did the other day. So keep your head on the swivel, and I'm going to see you in a minute. And like I said, I'm proud of you, shorty. I mean that. Now this right here is Neek's new celly. Old school gangsta ass nigga named Knowledge. Now of course, this nigga moved in with mad books. And he trying to get this nigga Neek some knowledge on the game. And how to survive in jail. Even though Neek won't be here for long, shit, he taking the advice with an open ear. Ain't like he been here before. He gonna need some tips and tricks on how to get down in here. And Knowledge got everything he need. Shit, if he stick with him, he should be aight in here. Tizzy always with me, he be trying to catch a big, huh? Every time I slide, I be in the store and big, huh? Walking with the skeezy in the shades, who is he, huh? Bitches the board everywhere, nigga T, huh? Yeah, four, five, hey, hard, he's gonna fuck up his neck bone. He say he a shooter, but his dumb ass got stepped on. High speed chase, seat belt, not strapped on. Your brother died last year, you still ain't get back for him. Uh, like fuck y'all doing? Y'all niggas sipping green, y'all niggas turkey with y'all on. I'm trying to crack it here to get up close. As y'all can see, Nitty hanging out in the pit. Now ever since Shorty went made that move and brought it back to Namir, he done had everybody in the crew on the block getting money. He hit this nigga Nitty with a couple ounces of coke and told that nigga get to working. Now of course, Nitty grew up in his neighborhood, so he feel real comfortable over here and he been making a little bit of money. I know y'all see the book bag. Now this right here is Dirty Mike, the same nigga that got shot at with Zoe a couple episodes back. Y'all remember that damn dummy? Why you ran dummy? Left your man dummy?
as y'all see, Neek chilling on the yard with Knowledge. They get to talking about Neek's case, and Knowledge give him a couple pointers on how he could beat it. Now, as y'all remember, the feds ran in the trap house next door, and because they smelled weed, they ran in Youngin' crib. Knowledge get to telling him that they weren't supposed to do that. Of course, that was an unlawful search, and they ain't even have a warrant. Now, Neek being a young kid from Baltimore, of course he don't know the law, so he just went with it. But Knowledge told him he'd get him a good lawyer, he could knock that case out the park. So next time he talked to Namir, he gonna definitely set that up. After they finished shopping at the mall, Shorty got a call from D-Man. Just by the sound of his voice, he could already tell it was bad news. D-Man told him to meet him at a gas station over on the east side so he could tell him what happened. Of course, he didn't want to talk too crazy over the phone. Now, as y'all know, Shorty just got this phone, but he kept the same number just for emergencies like this. And Shorty did a couple shopping or whatever. We gonna see what he got later on. Shit crazy in the streets right now. Shorty don't know what's going on, but he can only imagine what happened. See, when you live in this life, every day is something new. And new ain't always good. Whatever happened, Shorty gonna accept it like a man. And he gonna get ready to handle it, like he always do. At this point, he about to tell Rick to drop him off at the gas station to see what D-Man talking about. Rick pulled off, D-Man get to telling Shorty about what happened to Nitty. Man, Shorty couldn't believe that Nitty was gone. You know, they all grew up together. Ever since Shorty came to the west side, they really took him in and treated him like family. And he was real close to D-Man and Nitty. He can't believe this shit, man. Shorty feeling angry, and of course he ready to get back. Now, now men holding a meeting later on tonight, so D-Man supposed to take Shorty back to the west side. As y'all can see, Shorty got murder in his eyes. He ain't playing around. He ready to get to it. Shit getting crazy over on the west side of Baltimore. But shit, that's just how it goes. When you live in this street life, anything could go down. You just gotta be ready for it. Now this loss hit a little different for Neek. When he got the news, that nigga broke down crying. By him being behind walls, he ain't feel like it was nothing else he could do. Him and Nitty grew up in the sandbox. All he ever knew was Nitty, Namir, and D-Man. But mostly Nitty and Namir. See, D-Man came along later after the fact. But him and Nitty, shit, they been rocking since second grade. Losing him and knowing he can't do nothing about it, shit, that'll make the toughest gangster cry. Now, of course, Knowledge tried to cheer him up. Let him know he can't show no weakness behind bars. Knowledge done been in here for 15 years. He been through this before. He done lost a couple homies while being behind that cell. So he already know how to hold it together. Now, if y'all see Neek, the nigga eyes popping out and his jaw locking up. He popped a perk before he got the news. But even the strongest perk can't heal that pain. It's safe to say he just lost his best friend. I could tell he'll never be the same. They don't know what they just did, but after the day, they done woke a demon up. Now he can't wait to come home. He got some unfinished business to take care of. Now Mill rounded up his whole crew. He had to let them know it was time to go to war for real. Now of course, they didn't hit the other side a couple times. And it's been a couple attempts back, but ain't nobody dropped till now. Losing Nitty hurt the whole hood. Everybody feeling that pain. Now of course, they didn't got enough money to get Neek out of jail, so he should be home soon. And I know before he ain't want Neek to come back to Baltimore, but he got to. He gonna have to come back. He need all the soldiers he could get right now. And as y'all see, now Mir's crew ain't playing around. They ready to get active. Real active. It's been a couple days since I got the word about Nitty. Lately, I've just been working out to keep my mind off of things. You know, I've been doing push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, really anything I could think of. Losing Nitty really hurt me deeply, but I gotta keep my mind off it. While I'm behind walls, I gotta focus on surviving. Cause as y'all know, things could get real back here. Of course, I got knowledge by my side, and he been getting me through it. He keep on telling me these old war stories about how he used to move back in the 40s, 50s, Whatever, I ain't gonna lie. Knowledge like a hundred years old. But as y'all see, Knowledge still trying to get some sleep. I think I'm waking him up with all this noise. But like I said, I gotta keep my mind off the BS. Definitely gotta stay focused. When I come home, I'm gonna be real aki, you heard? Probably put on a couple pounds. All muscle though. 
I've been eating right, trying to keep my mind right. Yeah, I'ma definitely come home real headstrong. They ain't gonna know what's coming. But I'm definitely about to go to the cafeteria and get something to eat right quick. Then I'ma go hop in the showers. The thing I hate most about jail is these niggas act like they never heard nobody from Baltimore before. They keep making me say you and two, do and boo. I'm getting tired of this, man. But I get to telling them a story about how I landed in here. And they had the same opinions as knowledge. Then they kept asking me to tell them about old Baltimore stories from back in the day. You know, some of these guys are like 30, 40, 50. I'm a young nigga, man. I don't got time to be taking it way back in the day. So I get to tell them about the little robbery me, Nitty, and D-Man hit. Of course, I ain't say nobody names. I just told them what happened. And I told them how old man ended up dead afterwards. Even though we ain't do nothing to him, they couldn't believe what they was hearing. Some young niggas really out here getting to it. I don't know what they was doing back in that day. But in B-more, you hop off the porch pretty early. And these stories seem to be real interesting to them. I don't know. Maybe when I get out of here, I might write a book or something. Might even make a movie about my life. I gotta talk to Nightmare about it. Speaking of Nightmare, definitely gotta hit him up to see what's going on in the streets. I know the hood on fire right now, and I definitely seen a couple things on the news when I was in the day room the other night, but I ain't really worried about back home right now. Like I said earlier, I gotta focus on surviving in here, cause it's getting real. Things is definitely heating up, and me and Knowledge, you know, we getting deeper and deeper into our relationship, and he been keeping me on game about how to stick and move in here. To be honest, I don't know what I'd do without Knowledge. As y'all can see, we done ran into knowledge. I get to talking to him, he start telling me about a very important mission he want me to go on. Now apparently, one of his baby cousins is supposed to be coming up to the jail today to visit him. But he don't want to go visit him, he want me to go visit him. I don't know why he want me to get in tune with his baby cousin, but I guess we'll find out later on in the story. So I get to asking him like, okay, what am I going to talk to him about? Mind you, I don't even know the guy. He telling me that he got a very important package getting smuggled in today. And he need to make sure that I could get it through because they've been watching him real heavy lately. Like I said, Knowledge been in here for about 15 years. And he been behind these walls doing a lot of dirt. So of course the guards don't trust him. I guess they won't be watching me as hard as they'll be watching him. So I told him what's in it for me. Because you know behind these walls, every favor come with another favor. He told me if I get this done for him, he got me. Now of course it's Knowledge. He ain't never steered me wrong. So I took his word for it. I asked him what time I'm supposed to go up there. And he told me about an hour or two. So I guess I'm going to see what's going on. So I'm going to holler at y'all when we get up in there. And I'm going to see what his baby cousin talking about. Now I'ma be real with y'all, I ain't know what to expect when I came to the visitation room. When I seen Knowledge's little cousin, I couldn't believe how much they look alike. It's basically like I was looking at Knowledge, but 50 years ago. It was crazy bro, I ain't gonna lie about it. We get to talking for a little minute, get to wrapping it up. He was just like everybody else at the lunch table. He wanna hear my Baltimore accent, he wanna know how I came up. He really wanna get to know me before he give me this package. Now Knowledge already ran it down to me that they don't really work with just anybody, so I knew I was gonna have to get a little familiar with him, but he wanna know my whole life story. I ain't got time for that, man. It's only 15 minutes on his visitation. We gonna have to get this over with quick. So I gave him my name, told him where I'm from, told him why I'm in here, and I gave him about two stories from back in the day. He rocking with me, you know? I ain't gonna lie. Now his little cousin, he a cool cat. I give him that, and he came dressed to impress. He definitely got that shit on. He one of them where well, you could tell he get money on the outside. So he told me to play it cool for a minute, and then he found out a way to slide me that package. I don't know how he did it, but all I know is that package ended up in my lap. Now I had to just make it past the guards and get back to the cell to see what knowledge talking about.
Man, this nigga knowledge and patient is shit. This nigga really sitting here by the cell doors waiting for me to come upstairs. Like, nigga, I told you I'd be back in 15 minutes. He don't even understand. His cousin just sat there and make me tell him a whole life story. Nigga, that shit take time. As y'all can see, knowledge had me smuggle some narcotic paraphernalia into the prison. Now, of course, I had to say it like that because lately, YouTube been on my d for profanity. That's why y'all hearing all these bleeps in this episode. But like I said, he had me smuggle this into the jail and now he want me to go and sell it. Now, as y'all know, Neek definitely ain't new to selling drugs, but this would be his first time moving things behind bars. But as long as he stays smart and get it done, knowledge should take care of him. And he gonna need that extra support while he back here. He's still waiting on that bond money, still waiting on not me to get him out. Matter of fact, when he finished with this, he gonna give Nami a call to see what he talking about. But until then, Knowledge just running him the game and the layout of the prison, letting him know which corners to cut and where the cameras can't see you. And he also telling him the clientele, who got money, who don't got money. And he also told him not to take no IOUs. If they ain't got the bread on spot, they ain't getting served. As y'all see, we only got a limited amount of bags, so we can't cut no corners and we definitely can't get no deals. He told me his five people lined up to buy from him today. They all should be giving him at least $100. So after that, he should be breaking me off at least a bill for my labor. Now as y'all see, knowledge came through on his end of the deal. He broke me off $100 and told me I did good today and that tomorrow we gonna do a lot more serving and make even more money. Now a lot of y'all might be thinking, 100 ain't much, but behind these walls, I'm damn near a millionaire. Now when I finally got to talk to Namir, he had good news and bad news for me. The good news was that he had the bail money, but the bad news is that the prison wouldn't accept it. I guess because it was coming from an unknown source and they wanted to see where the money was being tracked back to. Now of course that's a red flag for Namir, so he told me I was going to have to chill in here for a couple more weeks till he could figure out how to clean the money. Now by his surprise, I wasn't even tripping. Seeing as how I've been making money myself while behind walls and me and Knowledge been getting cooler and cooler every day. I guess being in jail ain't as bad as I thought it was. I told him I was gonna hold it down in here and I told him to hold it down out there and we'll just see each other when we see each other. But for right now, I gotta focus on what's going on behind these walls. This my life right now. I gotta make the best of it. I told him I'll talk to him later, probably in a week or so. I got money to make and I got things to handle. He was proud to hear that I wasn't tripping and he told me I was finally becoming a man and accepting the consequences of my actions. After I was done with the rest of that package that I had got for knowledge, me and him start talking later that night and he started telling me about old times before he got booked. Like I told y'all, Knowledge got a hundred stories. He like a hundred years old. He started telling me about one particular story about a young cat that he met in the streets. A young guy that kind of reminded him of me. But when he met him, he was just a shorty. I'm talking like 10, 11, 12 years old. So as he got deep into the story, all I could do was listen. Knowledge took it back to the 90s. It was one summer day he was driving through a neighborhood that he was familiar with and he ran into his little homie, one of his little mans that was always outside. So on this day, he decided to put him to work to see what he was about. Look at Knowledge, man. All young in his prime. Yeah, he an all-star. As y'all can see, Knowledge was getting crazy bread back then. 
I'm talking he was a hood celebrity. As y'all can see, Knowledge pulled up on his little man's and he told him to hop in the car. They was about to go for a ride. Now everybody in the hood know, when you go for a ride with Knowledge, either you don't come back or you come back with some racks. So little man's had to take that chance. Once Knowledge got to the spot, he told Lil Man to chill in the car. He was about to go handle some business right quick and he'd be back soon. Now as y'all can see, back in the day, Knowledge was getting money with everybody. He didn't care about your race, gang, or where you was from. This particular day, he had a meeting with the Vatos. He went over there to go pick up a package that they had already previously agreed on. Like I said, he had his little mans in the car, so he couldn't talk for too long, but they get to talk about different prices and whatnot, and Knowledge was able to negotiate a price that both of them was happy with. So after they made their agreement, he took the bag and went about his business. They scheduled to meet up later on in the week, depending on how quick he moved the package. But knowing knowledge, you already know that's going to be going quick, especially with his little man's by his side. Knowledge finally got back to the trap house and got in contact with one of his best workers. I'm talking this somebody that could get rid of the whole bag within hours. So he called him up, they chopped it up for a minute, and he gave Knowledge a place to meet him at. Now he already told him that if his little mans come back and tell him anything negative, that it was definitely going to be problems. But like I said, everybody in the hood had mad respect for Knowledge, so hopefully it wouldn't be no problems. Hopefully his little mans could go over there, get the job done, 
and come back with good news. And afterwards, knowledge was going to hit him off with some bread. Because y'all know knowledge, he going to always take care of you if you take care of him. That's just how he is. And that's why everybody love him. And that's definitely why they respect him. As y'all can see, Knowledge Little Man's completed the drop. So when he made it back to the trap house, Knowledge hit him with a couple hundred dollars and congratulated him. As he was sitting there looking at his Little Man's, he realized that this was one of the next biggest players in the game. He started off way younger than Knowledge and anybody else that he know. And the way that he handled himself under certain situations, he already knew that he'd be a problem in the streets. That's when he gave him his infamous nickname, Trap Boy. After the story, I had so many questions about Trap Boy. I get to ask a knowledge about a thousand questions. What happened next? What was the next drop? How did he grow up? Where he at now? I had a million questions about Trap Boy. The way knowledge was explaining it, this was definitely a kingpin in the making. And that was like 20, 30 years ago. So I'm already knowing he going crazy in the game right now. But as y'all can see, knowledge getting tired. So he told me he'd tell me the rest of the story later. As for now, old man got to get his rest. Now as y'all know, Neek's still sitting in jail because now Mary gotta find a way to clean the money before he can officially bail him out. And to do that, he had to call on a very special person in the hood. Now everybody in the hood knows this person as somebody that could get anything done. You come at him with a task, he definitely gonna figure it out, even if he don't know it at first hand. Now as y'all see, now Mary chilling with Shorty and D-Man and he's strapped up because you never know what could happen. Now this right here is Unky, no relation, but he like the neighborhood uncle to everybody that's in need. Anytime the community has a problem, they call on Unky, and Unky gonna always give great results. Like I said, even if he don't know how to do it, he gonna figure out how to do it. And it's best you get his help before trying yourself, and failing at least. He told Unky his problem, and Unky just told him to hit him with the money, come back and see him in a couple days, and he'll have it clean. Now I was chilling on the yard with knowledge and we start wrapping it up about a few things. That's when we seen somebody that owe him a lot of money. Now of course, knowledge don't play about his bread. And as y'all seen, I was out here trapping for knowledge, moving a couple packages and he let me know up front, if they don't pay, then they still gonna pay. If you know what I mean. Now this right here, this is Carlos. He's the one that owe Knowledge the money. Now Knowledge told me to go up to Carlos and demand his money back. And if he don't pay him, then things might get violent. As y'all can see, Carlos ain't wanna get the money up. So things took a turn for the worse. Me and him got into a little scuffle and once he hit the ground, that's when Knowledge jumped in. As y'all can see, things ain't looking too good for Carlos. After today, he gonna learn who and who not to play with. Now everybody on the yard know, Knowledge ain't the man to be played with. I guess Carlos must have forgot that. Hopefully this beat down to teach him and everybody else a lesson. That when you owe Knowledge money, it's better to pay up fast before he come looking for you. Cause when he finds you, nine times out of 10, it's already too late. As y'all can see, Namir hit Unky with the money. Now Unky's gonna invest it into the local neighborhood barbershop. Now of course, y'all know barbershops bring in mad money on a daily. 
So it shouldn't be hard to exchange this money out for some new clean bills. Now he's gonna take this money, invest into the barbershop, clean it up a little bit to attract new customers. On the average, they do about 12 to 1500 a day. So after about a week or so, we should have all our money clean and ready to go. Until then, I guess we still gonna be in prison waiting on the money to get ready. But as y'all see, Namir didn't hit Unky with a little weapon so he could protect himself. It's a lot of money on the table. Gotta make sure that that money is secure. And he gonna send Shorty and D-Man over regularly to make sure everything going smooth. Now after that little fight that me and Knowledge got in, of course they sent us to the hole. My first time being in a hole was crazy. I ain't gonna lie to you. Being isolated like this could really make a man go crazy. I couldn't wait to get out. All I could do is think about the times when I was free, even the times when I was in general population, wishing I could go back. Now Knowledge, this ain't his first rodeo. He done been to the hole millions of times. Y'all know Knowledge stay getting in trouble. But of course, this was one of the best times to ask Knowledge to tell me another story about Trap Boy. Like I said, we ain't got nothing but time in here. So he get to telling me about the story when Trap Boy caught his first body. And I couldn't do nothing but listen. As y'all can see, Knowledge had Trap Boy outside moving a little work for him. Everything was going good for the beginning of the night. They only had a couple bags left and then they was gonna move to a new location. When out of nowhere, one of the customers start getting a little agitated. They start getting in Trap Boy's face, yelling and pointing and screaming and stuff like that. Now y'all already know, Knowledge don't like that. He definitely don't play about his work and more importantly, he don't play about his little man Trap Boy. That's his pride and joy right there. Anybody that mess with Trap Boy, he take it as they messing with him. So of course, Knowledge wasn't gonna let that slide. Y'all already know how Knowledge coming. At this moment, it was time for Trap Boy to finally become a man. He ain't have no other choice with Knowledge looking over his shoulder. Knowledge stood there and watched as Trap Boy handled his business like he always do. He already knew Trap Boy was ready for his lifestyle, but this right here, this let him know everything he needed to know. Not only was Trap Boy about that money, but he was definitely about standing on that business when it was time. After hearing that story, I got it in my mind that I gotta meet Trap Boy. I told Knowledge straight up, the next time Trap Boy come and visit him, he gotta send me to that visitation room. I gotta see what he about. Just off the stories Knowledge be telling, this really a neighborhood superstar, a legend in the making. Matter of fact, a legend that was already made. I gotta see if he got a book or something, maybe even a movie. But as y'all know, after a long story like that, Knowledge always acting like he tired. So I'ma let the old man get some rest and I'ma see y'all next episode. But man, I can't wait till he tell me another story about Trap Boy.